My name is Brandon. I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Brandon. Um, my sobriety date is May 18th, 2015. I'm really grateful for that. Um, deep breath, right? Um, thank you all for showing up, and thank you, Richard, for or for asking me to do this. You know, it, it's an opportunity for me to give back, and um, you know that's what I've determined is is my purpose in this life. You know, it's to see where I can be of service to those around me, and. You know, not only in the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, but in life in general. And uh, I didn't have that purpose before. Um, I had no purpose. I was just running. And, um, you know, I'm really thankful for the program. And, you know, I'll do my best to kind of share what it was like and, and you know, what happened and, and what it's like now. And hopefully somebody can get some hope out of that. Um, you know, I, I, my original sponsor told me to speak from the heart. And... Um, not that my, my current sponsor doesn't tell me that, but it really stuck with my original sponsor. And so I, I come unprepared for this, and, and my intent is to just speak from the heart because, you know, I've got a full heart today. And, um, you know, I didn't have that before either. Um, but anyway, I was born in 1980. I'm the youngest of three boys. I'm a, I'm a mama's boy. There's no doubt about it. Um, and one of my oldest brothers, a half-brother, he's 10 years older than me. And um, so... You know, there's a pretty good, big uh, age gap there, but uh, my other brother is, I guess, about two and a half years older than me. And, um, you know, I, I looked up to be like my brothers. I mean, my, my childhood was really good. Um, you know, my parents are still... I do get choked up a lot, just, just so y'all know. So um, my parents are still together today, you know, and I couldn't be more grateful for that. You know, what a blessing. I can't say that they're all that happy, but they're going to celebrate 50 years of uh, marriage uh, this coming year. And, you know, for me, it means a lot, you know. Um, you know, and I missed out on When I met Shannon, she said, you're a crier, aren't you? <laughs> um, it's true, I did. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say that I tear up like full-blown tears, but I definitely get choked up quite often because, like I said, I got a heart that's full today, and, you know, I was just existing before. And, um, you know, what, what I was trying to say is, that, you know, I just couldn't be more grateful to have the family that I, that I have. Um, and I missed out on many years with them. Um, during my act of alcoholism and drug use. And, um, you know, I'm going to speak a little bit to the outside issues because it's a part of my story, but I will bring it back to alcohol because um, that's what I've learned in here, that I'm an alcoholic and I suffer from the disease. And um, But anyway, you know, I, I, I grew up, uh, my parents, I never really recall my parents fighting. Um, my parents did not drink, uh, except my mom would, would neighborhood parties and, you know, weddings we went to and things like that, my mom would let loose, and she's a blast to be around um, when she does that. She's a blast to be around in general, but, um, you know, I, I just didn't have that that childhood. Um, however, you know, I had the brother that was 10 years older than me, and, and he was partying, you know. Uh, I, I, I thought the first time I had a sip of alcohol was at the age seven, but turns out it was actually around five, um, and I remember it. I really remember it. I don't remember the effects necessarily, but I remember I was in Midland, Texas, and um, he was at state ba baseball playoffs, and, um, you know, all the boys fed me beer, you know. Um, I didn't know that until a couple of months ago that I was actually younger than seven, but that's pretty young, you know. Um, but anyway, going through, going through school, I was always a really good uh, student. Um, always made good grades and especially in, in earlier years. Um, you know, I was always trying to live up to my dad's expectations. My dad was super hard on me. Um, you know, one, one thing that I think impacted me that I want to speak to is that, um, you know, both my brothers were baseball players. Both of them were really good at baseball. And I, I played baseball too, and I wasn't that good. And, um, you know, always that started like this training, this train effect of me feeling like a failure in a sense. And um, when I got to high school, I quit baseball. I went to the golf team where I could drink and smoke dope, 
during school. You know, we got to leave school early and go hit balls on the driving range, and, and I, that's what we did. We'd stop and get a 40 ounce and um, smoke some joints and um, screw around, you know. And, um, you know, that started at a really early age. I really started the, the outside issues actually in middle school and, um, you know, but it really progressed through high school. And, you know, I, I still continue to do good in school. I made a lot of um, good grades. I was super popular. Um, but on the inside, I really was a shy person, you know. Um, like Richard said, I'm, I'm fairly quiet um, and, and still am to this day. And, and um, you know, but what I've learned through this process is that, you know, I have to ask God for courage to get out of that. Um, and, and that's been part of the process for me. And that, I'll try to share about that if I can remember, if I can stay on track, right? Um, but anyway, I started working at another, another piece of this puzzle is I started working at this golf course when I was in high school. And um, I don't know if you, anybody's familiar with a club called Lock and Bar, but it's a super prestigious course over there uh, on the north side of Houston. And um, first of all, let me backtrack a little bit. For anybody who knows anything about this area, um, I went to Nimitz High School. Um, Amy knows about it. Um, you know, not the greatest reputation. Uh, it's over there in the Greens Point slash Humble slash Spring area. Um, and I was on the golf team at Nimitz High School. Um, that's a, uh, if you understood what that school meant, it's like that was the joke, right? That's a blow off, basically. Um, but anyway, I just started to take the easy way out, you know, and um, when I started working at this golf course, funny thing is, is this golf course is plugged right in the middle, like right by Greens Point. And, um, you know, it was um, very prestigious. It's actually where Tiger Woods was practicing as he was coming up. His coach uh, was the head pro there. And um, I, I got into, I started liking the, the landscaping part of it and the, the agronomy part of it. So I went to Texas A&M. Um, I mean, all I did was party, you know, that's all there is to it. And, and the, the drinking was just a huge part of my life. You know, I, I had one real bad year there and, um, I actually made a point two and a point six. Um, my, it was in my sophomore year there. And, um, you know, my dad said, you, you better straighten up. And, um, what happened is I ended up turning to the outside issues and I straightened up and, um, I stayed up and I studied and I stayed up for days and more days and more days. And, um, you know, that, that, that addiction on that side of stuff really took effect during that period. And, um, I ended up graduating on the Dean's list. Go figure. Right. Um, but anyway, um, you know, at that point I was, I was hanging around a lot of people. I was also in the club scene. So I was, uh, I started DJing in high school too. And I started going to raves real young. And, uh, you know, I, I was doing all those things and uh, that are involved in that. And, um, you know, I, I was stuck in Houston. And when I graduated, um, when I graduated college, I took a job in Dallas. And, uh, you know, it's that geographical cure that I thought I could get away from what I was doing. And, um you know, here's some of the things. I hurt my parents so bad. And sometimes I got caught, sometimes I didn't. And uh, here's an example of how I didn't get caught. Um, I went to Dallas and I had been using and drinking uh, up to the day before um, I got there. You know, my dad helped me move in, uh, took a drug test the first day of work. And um, I drank so much water and some other fake stuff to try to pass this uh, urine test. And, uh, you know, I started working and like a day later, the, the boss came back and said, you gotta go take this drug test again. I look back on that now, could you imagine the devastation that my parents would have suffered if I would have had to call them and say, I failed the drug test, I gotta come home, you know? Um, it's just, uh, I hope to express during this story the damage that I could have done to my folks. Um, they were the most important people in my life. Um, and I look back and thankfully I've made amends for all this stuff. They don't know about that piece, I don't think. Uh, I haven't invited them to one of my stories. I'm not sure I, I, that's appropriate. Um, but, you know, I look back and it's just, it's just devastating what, what I did to them. 
and um, you know, hopefully I'll elaborate on that a little bit more. But um, anyway, uh, I drank enough water and ended up being able to work a little bit longer. And um, I got the opportunity to come back to Houston a year later. And uh, it was really, it, it was on a golf course. And, um, you know, the reason why I start off with the lock and bar piece is because I had these high expectations, right? I did, I was like number 12 out of 400 in high school, you know, really good grades. Um, I worked at this prestigious golf club, took a really nice golf club uh, job out of high school or college, excuse me. And, um, and then I decided to come back to Houston to a pretty low end golf course, actually. Um, and that kind of started this train effect of failure again. Um, and, um, so I made the, made the jump back to Houston. Um, let me, let me just, when I was in Dallas, I really started drinking hard liquor real heavily. Um, that part of my story really escalated during that period. Um, cause I couldn't find, you know, the things that I was, I was used to doing here to keep me, you know, I would, I would drink beer and just stay up for days. Right. Um, that's just how my life was and, um, party all weekend. And I, I couldn't find that in Dallas, so I really switched to the hard stuff and um, to the hard liquor. And, uh, you know, I got caught doing donuts in my apartment complex front area. They caught me on camera, you know, sent me a violation. I'm like, oh, damn, you know. Um, <laughs> looking back, what an idiot, you know. Um, but, you know, anyway, I made it back to Houston and, uh, you know, I went right back to the to the way I was living before, and um, you know, thankfully I progressed through my prog my career. Uh, I never got fired, um, but I was just I was drinking and using day in and day out. There wasn't a, more than twenty four hours that I could go without it, and um, you know, you guys know it's just a life of desperation, and um, you know I didn't know how to get out, and. Um, you know, I, I felt so much shame over who I'd become, you know, and, um, you know, I just didn't know how to get out. I, I went to rehab in 2011 and went to an IOP program. I, actually, I need to elaborate on that. I was, I think, back living at home for like the fourth time, you know, out of college. And um, I had spent all my money, credit card debt, you know, all the, all the things that we do. Had to go back home. And um, my parents were just like, what is wrong with you? You know, come clean. What What are you doing? And um, I broke down one day and I said, here's, here's the situation, you know. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be descriptive here just because, again, it's part of my story. Um, but I broke down and I said, I'm on methamphetamine. I mean, that's the bottom line. And uh, I, I do not know how to stop. And um, so <sighs> that was one of the hardest days of my life. Oh, my gosh, man. Anyway, I went to IOP, um, stayed, stayed clean for a couple of months. Uh, you know, they recommended going to AA afterwards. I didn't do it. I didn't do the outpatient. Um, or I didn't do the extended care thing. And, uh, you know, I was drinking before three months were over. And uh, that's why I say I'm going to bring it back to alcohol because alcohol is what starts this stuff for me. And, um, you know, deep down, I just want to change the way that I feel because I, I was feeling like a failure. And, um, you know, first of all, I was no good at baseball. You know, I had turned into this reject of, of all these lower-end jobs that I thought, you know, I was on this path to be, this superstar golf course superintendent. It just wasn't working out that way. And, um, you know, I was completely broke and a bunch of credit card debt. And, um, you know, I'd become a failure. I'm a loser. Right. And, um, it, it was just sad. And, um, you know, I, I ended up drinking and, um, next thing you know, I'm doing pills. And the next thing you know, I'm back on methamphetamine. And, um, that was all within about a seven month period of that IOP program. Took me five years to get back here. Um, I was 35 years old, living back at mom and dad's house again, um, and um, 
I came to them myself this time. I actually came to my brother and I said, hey, Philip, um, I'm back on this stuff and I need help. You know, I'm ready to do this myself. I'm ready to do it and I'm ready to pay for myself to go back to treatment and um, let's go talk to mom and dad. So he met me over at my parents' house that afternoon, the following afternoon, and um, I said, look, here's the situation. And um, my life's never been the same since, honestly. Um, that was, uh, again, my sobriety date's May 18th of 2015, and uh, since that day, I haven't found it necessary to, to alter the way that I feel um, at all. Um, the obsession was removed very quickly for me. Something triggered in my head, and I just surrendered everything, and I just said, God help me, you know? Um, God help me, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Um, I went to rehab, I checked myself in inpatient, and uh, I checked myself out of inpatient three days later and uh, I do not recommend that for anybody uh, but it's part of my story and uh, my parents were super pissed off at me and uh, they were coming up there for the family day and I was sitting out on the curb and um, they were not happy at all and uh, you know they they were just uh, you know it was like here we go again you know and um, I just kept trying to, you know, I was insane at the time, right, and delusional, and, you know, I shared last night about me being delusional, and, um, you know, I was completely out of my mind still, but, again, something had triggered, and I just said, God help me, and, and um, the obsession was, was honestly removed, um, and um, anyway, long story short, I ended up at the Cypress group that day, it was a Saturday, the day before uh, uh, Memorial Day, and, um, I ended up at the Cypress group that day. I uh, had taken a leave of absence from work and um, to go to treatment. And, um, you know, I, I uh, ended up at the Cypress group and uh, walked in and found it welcoming. You know, right when I walked in the door, a guy named David T said, welcome home, basically. And um, you know, I love that about the fellowship. You know, it's so welcoming. And, you know, I'm not quite sure I would have stuck around if that wasn't the case. But um, they definitely made me feel at home over there, and I started to uh, come. I, they told me to do 90 meetings in 90 days, and I did about 180 meetings in 90 days. And, um, you know, again, I was desperate. I was, I was at a point where I surrendered everything. And I didn't quite understand what that mean, meant at the time. But um, you tell me to do something, I'm going to do it. Um, and so I did it. And, um you know, I went back to work for a few days um, and decided to leave that job. I did talk to David T. became my temporary sponsor at the time, and um, I talked to him about leaving my job, and I couldn't tell you what he said, but I did it anyway. And uh, I don't remember what he said, right? But I wasn't listening anyway, right? You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, I left that job, and I had no job. I was living at my folks, and, um, you know, I just I plugged into the program. I started going to Cypress Group morning, day, and night. And... Um, you know, it wasn't long before uh, I got a new job in a different industry. And, um, you know, and <clears throat> I'm really thankful for that, too. It was time for me to change jobs, actually. Um, and, and, you know, the way that's all, God's played a part in that has been awesome because what happened was an old assistant of mine on the golf course had called me and said, I heard you're looking for a job. And long story short, now the vice, I'm the vice president of this landscaping company that's the, basically the biggest um, not national landscaping company here in Houston, and I love my job. I really do. And, um, you know, I get, the, I get the opportunity to work with people and serve people, you know. And, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, I found this purpose in my life through this process, and it, it's about getting out of myself and serving others. And I do that not only at work, but I try to do it as much as I can through the program and, uh, I'm going to try to share a little bit about that, too. Um, but, you know, um, I, did, uh, I did Back to Basics program. They were offering that over at the Cypress Group when I first got sober. And I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it's just like a four-week program where you kind of fast-track through the, um, the steps. And I did that with David T. And, um, again, that was early summer of 2015, and I finished that and, um, with him, and, and something was missing. Um, I just felt something was missing. And um, so I ended up at the, I ended up at a uh, kayaking trip that the Cypress Group does. And um, again, just, just remember at this point, I'm a very shy, very 
reserved, um, quiet individual. I had not broken out of my shell at all yet. Um, still working on breaking out of my shell. And, um, but anyway, I ended up at that kayaking trip and we were, went to share one night and I said, I'm here to get a sponsor. And, um, a gentleman named Boston Jim offered himself up and I, I, he was a member at the Cypress group and, you know, I, 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 they told me to pay attention to the people who have something you want, right? And he was, he had something that I wanted. I mean, every time I talked to that guy or saw him, he's back there in his chair like this. And, um, just the calmness in his voice was just something that I remember. And I said, yeah, I, you know, multiple people said that they'd be willing to, to be my sponsor at that day. And, um, I asked Boston Jim to do it. And, uh, my life has never been better since that day. That was really a huge turning point in my sobriety because again, uh, something was missing through that first process with the temporary sponsor. And, um, uh, you know, I'm super thankful for Jim and, um, you know, I think about him all the time. And, um, anyway, we got to work. He said, look, first thing you're going to do, you're going to call me every single day. No exceptions, no exceptions. And, uh, I remember there was one day I didn't call him. I texted him and he said, nah, you're going to call me. And he said, the purpose of you calling me is so you can get out of yourself. And, um, so I did that. I did that to the best of my ability and we got in the book and basically, you know, what he taught me was that, you know, I suffer from the disease of alcoholism and I, I, I have this allergy to alcohol and, you know, once I put it in me, I suffer this uh, phenomenon called craving and, um, you know, for whatever reason, that kind of stuck with me. I, I started to understand it. I really didn't catch that through that process with the first sponsor. I didn't, you know, I don't know if I was just still cl too cloudy or what, but, um, I didn't pick up on that. And, um, you know, he also told me that we suffer from an obsession of the mind, and uh, that I could definitely relate to because I, I think way too damn much, <laughs> you know. Um, my mom even said it the other day. She, she remembers me being a thinker when I was a kid. I said, that's not a good thing, you know, <laughs> not for this alcoholic, you know. Uh, but anyway, we started working the program, and um, I started taking the steps, and, um, you know, I did a lot of writing. Um, you know, I, I did a lot of writing, and um, I, I met with him weekly at minimum. Um, you know, he gave me assignments. I started reading, I started writing, and uh, I started sharing with him. And, you know, there's nothing, shared it last night, too, there's nothing like the one-on-one -on -one sharing of one alcoholic to another. I, I mean, for those of you that know Jim, he's many years older than me. And I connected with that guy, like, instantly. You know, the things that he was sharing with me, I could relate to. And uh, it just kept me coming back. And, you know, I felt so at home and so at ease sharing with him, like, what's going on with me? And I finally began to, to be honest with someone, you know, and I started to break out of my shell and, and let go of some of these things that I had been holding forever. And uh, the guilt, the shame, the, some of the things that I had done. And, um, you know, I'm really thankful for that. And, you know, we started taking the steps and... Um, you know, we got to step two. Um, you know, first of all, again, I started to understand that I suffer from the disease of alcoholism. And, um, you know, I fully accepted and conceded to my innermost self that I'm an alcoholic. Um, step two, I always had a conception of God. I went to church a little bit when I was a kid, but um, never really understood what that meant. Um, I don't remember this hellfire brimstone God as a child. Um, but I just never had a personal relationship with God. And, um, you know, so that part was a little bit easy for me. Um, and through the remainder of the process, which I'll talk about, um, you know, I, I began to develop this personal relationship. And that, um, I believe that's what keeps me sober today. You know, the fellowship is a big part of it. The steps are a huge part of it. But ultimately, for me, it's God. Um, as long as I'm willing to surrender my life to him, you know, he takes care of me. And um, you know, that, that's part of the process that we have to work on on a day-to-day -day basis is surrendering to him. And, um, you know, that's what I try to do today. But, um, you know, we got to the third step, and uh, he said, I want you to memorize this prayer, and we're not going to move on until you memorize it. And I'm super thankful for that, too. Um, took me a couple of weeks to memorize it. Um, once I did, 
And, you know, I, I memorized it, right? I didn't understand what it was necessarily meaning, but I just was, again, I was going through the process. He was telling me to do something, and so I was doing it. And uh, <clears throat> once, I, once I felt I had it down, uh, we got down on our knees, and we said the third step prayer together. And, um, you know, he, he asked me what it meant. And, um, you know, I regurgitated the best that I could what it meant. And, um you know, I'm thankful for that. I'm really thankful for that because now I understand what it means. And, um, you know, again, I was just working through the process to the best of my ability, but he was setting me up to understand uh, how this thing works. And, um, you know, that's how he worked it with me, and um, I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. But anyway, I got to work on this inventory, and, um, you know, I had a few resentments. Obviously, my parents, uh, my dad was really hard on me, like I mentioned, um, there were a couple of resentments um, that came out, but when I got to the fear inventory, I, <laughs> I mean, I was afraid of everything, everything. And he was like, we sat down and, and we worked through this, and he was like, no, this is, this is stupid, this is stupid, this is stupid. And he, I still had the piece of paper he put on there, trust God. I mean, that's what he said. Um, this is my favorite part of the book, without a doubt. Um, and I do want to read this, actually. Um, when it says we reviewed our fears thoroughly, we put them on paper even though we had no resentment connection with them. We asked ourselves why we had them. Wasn't it because self-reliance failed us? Self-reliance was as good as, as far as it went, but it didn't go far enough. Some of us once had great self-confidence, but it didn't fully solve the fear problem in any other. Going on. Perhaps there's a better way, we think so, for we're now on a, basis of di on a different basis, a basis of trusting and relying upon God. And um, so that's my job today, to really try to do my best to trust and rely upon God um, so he can solve this fear problem because I'm driven by a hundred forms of fear, right? All I care about is myself, and all I care about is what you think of me. All I care about is if I'm going to fail, um, you know, you know, and I say that with, I still struggle with this. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I struggle with every time something's bothering, bothering me, it's because I'm afraid I'm not going to get what I want, or I'm afraid I'm going to lose what I already have, or, you know, it's, it's something driven by fear. And, um, you know, the reason why I love that so much is because I'm not trusting God when I'm in that. That's the bottom line. And, um, you know, thankfully this, this program has given me an outline to um, work on that, you know. And um, my, life, my life has changed for sure. You know, I say that I still struggle with it. I'm so much better than I used to be, you know. Um, but I still struggle with it. You know, I'm an alcoholic, no doubt about it. Um, anyway, um, when I went to share that fourth step, let me, let me touch on the sex inventory too. I heard a lot of people in that area. Uh, I don't want to skip over that. I've heard, I've been in meetings where, especially these book, book, big book studies where people say they skipped over that part. I did not skip over that part. Um, I did this exactly how he told me to do it. And I wrote down all the damage I had done. And I damaged a lot of people in that area, too, um, including myself. And, um, you know, through that process and sitting down with him during the fifth step, we did it at his house. I started to understand that I was the creator of all this stuff, quite honestly. And, um, you know, started to open my eyes and started to open my eyes that, um, you know, I'm really the creator of all my problems. And. You know, those, you know, I had some resentments toward my brothers and things like that, that, you know, growing up, especially Philip, Amy knows Philip, um, he picked on me. I don't know if you knew that, but he picked on me hard. And, um, you know, I had a big resentment towards him and I, and I held it for a long time. And, um, you know, I started to realize through this process that he was just a kid, you know, he's just a kid. He's my older brother and he loves me and Love him, you know, and um, I've been able to forgive him for that.
there was a time when, uh, you know, I, I can be around his kids today. There was a long period where he did not want me around anybody in his family because um, he knew what I was doing. Um, you know, I love my family. I love my family so much. Every day is a blessing, you know what I mean? And, and I can't forget that. Um, but, let's see here. I'm, trying to see. I'm doing pretty good on time, I think. Um, so anyway, went through the process, six and seven. Uh, let me, let me start over when I did the fifth step inventory, you know, my sponsor helped me work through that and identify my part in all of this. Uh, I, I was oblivious to most of it, uh, at that point. I can see it more frequently today when I'm struggling with something where my part is, but I still try to reach out and, and ask my sponsor today, um, to help me with that. And, um, you know, I'm usually able to make amends pretty quickly and, and, uh, if I need to and, uh, turn it over to God and again, try to work on service right um so i can get out of that but um you know didn't understand six and seven when i was working through it in the book there's not much to it um you know he he did he did have me go through a process where we wrote down all my defects of character we wrote down the opposite of that and we said we're going to give this to god we did a prayer we did the seventh step prayer and we gave it to god and i didn't know what i was doing right um but through the process uh, of studying the material later on, um, I've really started to understand that that's all about building my character. And, um, and I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm glad for that, too. But anyway, I made amends. I, I, was, I did not shy away from the amends. Um, and, um, you know, I went head on. Um, you know, I talked all of them through with my sponsor prior to doing them. And... Um, and we made an outline, um, what I was going to say, and, and I went straight forward in doing it. And then uh, what happened was when I got to 10, um, we kind of fast-tracked through 10, 11, and 12, Jim and I, and then he moved to Florida. Um, and so here I'm at a turning point. You know, here goes my sponsor. He's moved. And, um, you know, what am I going to do? Um, so I... I called another uh, person that I looked up to over at the Cypress Group, and I started working with him, and I worked with him for a couple of weeks, and he said, Brandon, this isn't going to work. I said, okay. Um, he said, you know, you're a little bit farther along than most of the sponsees I've worked with before, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm also working with several people, and I just don't think this is going to work. I said, okay, well, I appreciate you telling me that. <laughs> and um, I'm so thankful for him doing that. That was a huge part of my process. And... Um, you know, again, I was at a turning point. What am I going to do? So I picked up the phone and called Lester. And, uh, you know, I had known Lester a little bit. And um, he said, well, let's go to uh, dinner and let's talk about it before I say yes. You know, and uh, anyway, I convinced him to uh, say yes. And, uh, you know, he's my sponsor still today, and I'm very grateful for that. You know, I do a big book study with those guys. Not a big book, but a book study with those guys. Uh, you know, Herb was a big part of that. And... Um, on Tuesday nights, and I've been a part of that for many years now, and I've learned a ton from these guys. You know, these guys are like, I think they're scholars. Um, they know these books inside and out, and their intellect on how to interpret this stuff is, like, top-notch. And uh, I'm still, like, brain-dead down here, but, uh, you know, I do what I can to share my experience. That's what they told me. Like, just do what you can to share your experience, and um, that's what I try to do today, you know. I talked to Shannon a lot about these meetings and Sharon and, and things like that and, you know, sharing at meetings. And, um, you know, what they taught me was you know, it's not a popularity contest, number one. Um, you don't have any, you don't have to say anything profound, right? You share your experience. And uh, that's what I try to do today, you know. Sometimes it comes out good, sometimes it doesn't, you know what I mean? Um, that's okay. Um, you know, and, and that's part of the process of why I'm here t sharing my story, you know, hopefully somebody can get something out of it, but it's my experience. Um, you know, I came from complete desperation and, um, you know, my life today is completely different. Um, <laughs> I 
I had um, pretty much come to a point in my life where I had just um, accepted the fact that I'm going to be alone. know that I'm never going to be a father, right? Thankfully, that's changed. It's, it's because of this. If I wasn't here doing this work, I wouldn't have this life, you know? Um, but... Here's a joy, if you don't know, if you don't know that. <coughs> but anyway, you know, I got to work after I, after I uh, ended up getting with Lester. And, um, you know, I got to work. I started doing birthday night. You know, ended up, I shared this last night, too, that, um, you know, that first Blue Bonnet. You know, I'm grateful for Blue Bonnet for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, there's not that many people here tonight. Um, <laughs> Two, uh, I ran into Amy, um, who was my neighbor when I was younger, and I honestly don't know if I'd be here today if I had not run into her, because I was sitting out there on that little patio area, and she was like, Brandon? And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it made me feel at home. It, it was like a huge part of my recovery, and I've told you this before, but I'm so thankful for that. Um, I really don't know if I'd be here. And um, I'll never forget that. I also ran into Daniel there, um, who's one of my best friends today. And, um, you know, I was sitting over somewhere, or maybe by the ping pong table or something like that, and, and Daniel walked up. And, um, you know, our lives have never been better since. Um, you know, I don't want to share his story, but he had come from a rough past too. And, um you know, we, we hit it off really quickly and we started playing ping pong and ended up, you know, he lived right down the street, honestly. And um, so I started picking him up and going to meetings at the Cypress Group and we became really good friends. And we started getting active. We were doing bowling. Um, we were going to the retreats all the time, um, going out to dinner, um, going to meetings pretty much every night. You know, I just kept doing what they told me to do and, and trying to stay plugged in. And, um, and I, you know, I'm really thankful for you too. And, um, and, you know, I didn't know how to be a friend before and now I do, you know, um, all I cared about was manipulating people to get what I wanted before. And, um, you know, I try not to do that today and I think I'm pretty successful at it. Um, but I got to work. I started doing birthday night. I ended up being the GSR or alternate GSR for Cypress Group. I ended up doing the treasurer for the district for a couple of years. Um, what else? We were, like I said, we were going to conferences. We were doing all the active stuff. And, um, you know, for the first several years, and quite honestly, I was on a spiritual high for many years. And, um, you know, what ended up happening for me is I ended up back at church and, um, that's another huge piece of my story is like I ended up back at church that, that I went to as a child. It's in a new facility now with a new pastor, with some of my old high school friends that I grew up with. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I ended up getting saved. I ended up getting baptized. And, and quite honestly, my heart's never been fuller of God since then. And, um, you know, what brought me there is this program. It's actually doing the work and um, praying, learning how to pray. I didn't know how to pray before, right? But, you know, thankfully, Jim and Lester helped me with that. And, um, and um, you know, it ended up getting me back to church. And, you know, I still go to church pretty much every Sunday. I can't say that I'm very active in that community. Um, but I go there because it's a, it's a cleansing for me. It, it really is. It's like a cleansing and... You know, I try to do more of the service piece in here and just in my regular life, but um, I feel so full, of, so full of the presence of God in my life today. 
and um, you know I, I wouldn't have that without the program and um, I'm super thankful for that too and um, but yeah I mean what it's like now I try to do the best that I can one thing that I forgot to share is when I when I did my fifth step I left that I left that meeting um, I left that meeting just filled full of my it's like my heart filled up um, you know this this hole that had been in my heart um, finally started to close up and it was God closing that thing up I had shared the deepest darkest stuff that that quite honestly I, I thought I would go to the grave with and um, I did a lot of shameful stuff and um, you know one thing that I'll share too is like it says more will be revealed right and more has been revealed um, and I I uh, I went to the Holy Name Retreat uh, a couple of years into this thing, and when, this was when I was working with Lester. And um, you know, I, I I had not forgiven myself yet on a few of those things. Um, I had not given that over to God completely, and uh, I was able to do that at the retreat. And uh, I don't suffer from that anymore, actually. That was a, that was another huge turning point in my life, but um, you know I continue to try to do the best that I can. Um, you know, one thing that I've been sharing on recently is that um, Shannon and I were talking a little bit about this last night. Is you know the last you know they they say that you're five to ten and maybe even five to fifteen. You really don't see many of these people on the board with those years and. Um, you know, around year six, um, I really started to f struggle with um, that connection um, as I had before. Um, or let me rephrase that. It wasn't quite as strong as it was before. But what I did was I continued to seek, and I still continue to seek today. Like, even when I'm struggling and, like, I'll get up in the morning and I'll read and stuff like that, I continue to do it, and I just get out on my knees and say, God help me. You know, I can't focus at all. I don't understand anything that I just read because my mind's racing 100 miles an hour. But help me, you know, please help me turn my will over to you. And uh, I keep working at that. You know, I, I was told never give up. And, um, you know, I was told the more you put into this thing, too, the more you're going to get out of it. And, you know, to me, that part of that's prayer. You know, if I'm feeling disconnected, I need to pray. Um, I need to get out of myself somehow. And... Uh, I continue to try to do the best that I can at that. Um, you know, uh, life's, life's good today. Um, like I said, I mean, I'm super thankful my life has changed. You know, um, you know, I asked Shannon for her hand in marriage. <laughs> for her hand in marriage, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Um, couldn't be more excited for that. You know, I love Alyssa to death. Um, you know, I get to be a stepfather. Um, that's plenty sufficient for me. Plenty sufficient. Uh -huh. All I ever wanted in life was to be happy and to have a family. Finally seeing that through, you know. Um, thank you to Crystal. Uh, Crystal and Daniel introduced Shannon and I, so um, super thankful for that. But, um, you know, I just keep trudging this road, man. I just keep trying to do the best I can, and, um, you know, it's not always pretty. Um, you know, I, again, what I was trying to say earlier was that what I've been sharing on lately is I've still been a little disconnected um, spiritually. You know, I've, I've, I've moved in. You know, I, I've, this whole church and getting baptized thing, like, there's no doubt the presence is within me. Uh, the Spirit of God is within me. However, the, the connection ebbs and flows for me. And, um, and, and I'm working at it, and I'm, I'm seeking. And uh, it's really been a grind the last couple of years. You know, my life has changed with being in a relationship. I, I was always by myself previously, and... You know, I didn't have to think about others quite so much, and um, it's it's new. It's new for me, and um, you know, and, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Don't get me wrong, but 
I just haven't quite hit my stride with that. Um, and, you know, I, we're living together and, um, you know, I used to have this, you know, routine at my house where I'd get up and I'd read and I'd read for a good 30 minutes and, um, you know, I'd pray, I'd write. One thing that I've been missing is I have not been writing. I have not been journaling. And um, over the first five, six years, um, when I was struggling with something, I journaled. And it really helped me, and that's one thing that I haven't been doing. And so I'm here to tell myself that that's something that I need to do. Um, you know, things that have worked for me in the past, I need to try again, for sure. Um, hope, I'm, hopefully they'll work this time. But, um, you yeah, know, I'm just not... And maybe that was a pink cloud. I don't know that I was on for an extended period of time. I really don't know. But um, it's just been a little bit more of a grind for me the last couple of years. And um, that's okay. It's okay. Um, I'm going to keep, keep working at it, you know. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future. I'm looking forward to what our life holds together. You know, we've had so much fun the last couple of years. That's one of the things, too. We were talking last night about the fellowship. And, man, Daniel and I, we've been snowboarding numerous times. Shannon and I, we've been, what, camping. We've been hiking. We might, we hiked the, um, what's it called in California, Half Dome, about died. Um, <laughs> you know, that's a bucket list type thing. If you all aren't aware of that, like, check it out. Half Dome in Yosemite, it's intense. It was like 14 hours or something and like 5,000 feet elevation gain. It, or gain, it was intense. Um, She's this crazy woman over here. It's got me into running too. <laughs> Freaking running a half marathon tomorrow. What you do for love, right? <laughs> um, no, I enjoy the running too. I, I really do. I, I just can't do. I can't do more than half marathon. It's way too much. But um, yeah, I don't really know. I'm. I'm. Um, yeah, I'm super thankful. I'm. I'm. I'm I'm happy to be a part of the program. You know, I'm happy to say, too, that Cypresswood Group is now officially my home group as of 2024. Uh, I have not been back to Cypress Group in 2024. Um, what that means for me is now I need to get into action over here. You know, uh, I was into action over at Cypress Group, and um, there's no particular reason why I'm not going there anymore. It's just because I've moved in over here, and it's closer, and, you know, I really like the people here, and I, I love the message here. The message is super strong. Um, and, um, you know, I, I didn't like get a resentment over Cypress group or anything like that. It's nothing like that. Um, it's just, it's just made sense. And, um, so, you know, I need to get into action over here and start being a part of as far as service goes. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to that. So, um, I'm trying to think if I've missed anything, you know, I've done this a few times and, you know, you walk out of here and you're like, oh, I should have said that, I should have said that, I should have said that. You know, I did not come prepared with the exception of uh, what God had on my heart, except I did write just a couple of notes. Let me just see. Yep. Pretty much just said I was rejected as a kid. That's what my notes say. <laughs> um, I didn't get very far with that. So, um, but no, I appreciate you all being here. Um, yeah, I love the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. I know I no longer suffer from the guilt and shame that I suffered from before. You know, I have a program that I can correct uh, my behavior at any point, at any time, at any day, and I can start over at any t at any point too. Um, you know, I don't I don't um, I don't act out like I used to. Um, I don't react. Let me put it that way. You know, I used to get pretty angry. Um, Another thing I wanted to say, too, actually two more, now that I have a, just a couple more minutes. Um, two things. Um, I used to fly off the handles, um, especially when my dad would make me mad, you know, and uh, he was just trying to help me. That's another process that I've learned through this is really working the fourth step and, and sharing with my sponsor is that my dad just loves me. You know what I mean? He was only trying to help me. He was always complaining to me about me and my spending my money. He was telling the truth, right? I mean, uh, I was spending all my money on partying. And uh, he was just trying to understand what I was doing so he could help. And unfortunately, I built a resentment over there, but or over that. And, man, I had some knockdown blowouts with him. And, um, 
you know, I don't do that today. You know, my relationship with my family is like top notch. Um, and, um, you know, two other things. Another thing that I'm very proud to say, too, is I don't suffer from depression anymore either. And I know that's because God's within me. Um, you know, I was on depressants, antidepressants from middle school um, up until about two years into sobriety. And uh, I got with my doctor and I said, I don't think I need to take this stuff anymore. And um, we weaned off of it. And I, you know, there's never a depressed thought in my mind ever today. I'm so happy for that. I used to be a sad, depressed kid. Um, maybe not externally, I don't know, um, because I've talked to some people that, like, I share this with, and um, they're like, man, I really did not see that as you, as a kid or anything like that. But that's how I was internally. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm, I'm no longer on that. Uh, I don't recommend doing that for anybody who's on that. Talk to your doctor, right? Um, but that's my story. And um, the last thing I was going to say, too, that... Um, I love to smile today, too. I think that's one of the best benefits that I've got out of this program is I never, ever smiled, ever, uh, in my previous years, uh, unless my teeth were chattering because I was on something, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> but, um, um, you know, I love to smile today. You know, another thing that I've shared is that there's really no family photos of me for an extended period of time within my 20s and early 30s because I was pretty much sleeping whenever I was at a family function and because um, I was recovering and um, if I was even there. And, um, you know, you see a lot of photos of me today uh, within my family group and, um, you know, there's a big bright smile on it or on my face and you know even as recent as well we were touring a wedding venue last week and my mom was like you know I love your smile that touches my heart big time um, I can finally say that I think I've made my parents proud you know what I mean um, and uh, pretty sure they'd say the same thing um, so anyway, thank you again, Richard, for allowing me the opportunity. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful to be sober today. Thank you. I'm Richard, and I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Richard. Thank you again, Brandon. I really appreciate it. He's got his fiance on his as a screensaver. That's, that's kind of cute. <laughs>